Hello, everyone. My name is Wahid Lutfi. Welcome to my web university, my YouTube channel. On the last session, we, are, we, we discussed Linux how-tos on the compilers and interpreters. In particular, I covered uh, this video, which is uh, Linux uh, compilers and interpreters on Linux Ubuntu. The uh, Debian distribution was discussed and the VM was a Linux Ubuntu. Today we're going to discuss the second video, which is 13 number uh, 13 uh, number two, which is um, Linux Rocky version. So uh, let's get started on this one. As you can see, I have already prepared a PDF file or a PowerPoint presentation in this case, not PDF. So I'm going to go through a slideshow. And um, on the slideshow, you can see that we're discussing Linux how-tos on the compilers and interpreters. And then um, we're going to um, discuss uh, Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is uh, video number 13.2. Then the previous version, we discussed um, Ubuntu compilers and interpreters, which was 13.1. This is uh, uh, Rocky. And then uh, coming up next would be uh, video number 13.3, which, which would be Red Hat compilers and interpreters. So today we're discussing Rocky version. And then uh, this is the one that we are uh, covering today, uh, video number 13.2, uh, Rocky Linux. And then um, this was already uh, covered on video number 13.1. And so this one is already posted on my YouTube channel. Please watch that one and enjoy it and learn from it. And then uh, let's get started with um, comparison of uh, between compilers and interpreters. As we discussed previously, the comparison of compilers or interpreters is the same uh, in this regard to which platform, whether it's Fedora uh, distribution, that could be Rocky or uh, Red Hat or CentOS or uh, Debian distribution, which would be Ubuntu or OpenSUSE or uh, some other one, uh, Linux Mint, all of those ones are different distributions. And we're discussing um, first right now, what is a compiler? A compiler is a special program that uh, translates a programming language, such as C, C++, Java, Go language, all of those ones into a machine and language. The source code you provide and then you compile it through the compiler of that programming language and then you generate a machine code or in case of a Java kind of programming into a bytecode or sometimes into another programming language. So that is what is a compiler. And then the interpreter, on the other hand, it is a line by line uh, analysis and execution. So an interpreter is a, a special program that can analyze and execute the program line by line. And the interpreter is slower because it's uh, going to look for each line if the first line has some kind of syntax error is uh, going to be caught at the time of compilation or interpretation in this case, and then it's gonna uh, throw an error, then you correct it and it goes to line number two, then you move on to the entire program. But on the source code of a, a compiler, you write the program if it is one page source code or 10,000 page or five page or whatever page number of source code it is, and they're all going to be uh, fetched into the compiler as a source code. You compile them once, and then if it uh, has a syntax error, it's going to be caught. But semantic uh, on the both of the uh, compiler and the uh, interpreter, semantic is which has uh, something to do with meaning, logic of uh, the programming. That one is caught at runtime on both compilers or uh, interpreters. So semantic is, um, has to do with meaning, and that's why if it is an equal sign versus two equal sign, that's a logical error. So you have to correct it, and then you will only catch those type of errors at the runtime. But syntax of the language, it's always either at the compiler for compilers or um, at the line that you are executing on an interpreter, it will be caught there. Example of compilers, there are assembly language, which is uh, assembler is 
NASM or AS for assembler, and then LD is for the loader that uh, link uh, the object files, and then you get an executable uh, binary file, and the binary file will be uh, just running the machine code instruction, which is eventually to zeros and ones and um, those ones. The C and C++ um, also has a compiler called uh, GNU uh, C collection compiler or GNU C++ co uh, collection compiler. The uh, version for C is GCC. Uh, the compiler is GCC and the version for C++ is G++ uh, compiler. And then we also have IDEs, uh, which is integrated development environments that has both um, uh, tools that you can just write your source code, as well as um, tools to build your system or uh, from source uh, the object file and executable file and binaries. And then it has um, also you know, the intelligence uh, that is going to until the sense we call it, and then um, sometimes it helps you to uh, write the code faster by giving you some kind of uh, help uh, as well. And then the JetBrain is one, Visual Studio Code is one. Visual Studio Code is the Microsoft lightweight for the actual Visual Studio Code, um, uh, the uh, Microsoft full-fledged uh, one that is um, everything all together is more uh, powerful. But the Visual Studio Code is the open source version for uh, that, and it's the lightweight version for it. Uh, Xcode is also available. Xcode is uh, for Apple. Um, it uh, does whenever you work on the Apple uh, platform, you can uh, download Xcode from um, Apple, and then um, you can uh, compile like C, C++, Swift, uh, Pascal. I'm not Pascal. Maybe Pascal too. Uh, Swift, Go language, and then RAS, um, Objective-C, and so on, Java, everything. With code blocks, you can do the same thing. It's an open source kind of uh, availability that is free. So you can do C, C++, Python, everything with code block also. And then uh, Rust is the another compiler, which is um, the uh, compiler is called Rust-C. This is a programming language uh, that is called Rust. And it is um, the alternatives to C++ is very powerful in terms of memory management compared to C++ and memory leaks, as well as Rust uh, allow you to uh, do game programming like C++. It's much faster. And, uh, and uh, like C and C++, it is uh, very, very fast. Uh, uh, but the simplicity of it is much like uh, Python uh, coding. It does not require like header files to include and in everything. Java uh, had, was introduced back uh, by Sun Microsystem long time ago. Um, Java um, compiler was uh, James um, Goslin um, was uh, the developer for it. And uh, Java C is the compiler. Java uh, itself is the virtual machine. And then the Open JDK or Java standard development uh, kit or Java runtime is the um, compiler that you could just download and then install it and then you get all the tools that you can use, jar file, Java C and J Java itself, all of them together. Go and Go language um, was uh, developed by three pioneers of uh, uh, a Google uh, company 2007, Rob uh, and Robert and um, Ken Thompson from uh, Ken Thompson uh, also developed with Dennis Ritchie, God bless Dennis Ritchie, passed away a long time ago, uh, a few years ago, or maybe uh, some years ago. And then uh, C++, uh, uh, actually C was introduced by Dennis Ritchie back in, uh, in Bell Laboratory uh, at uh, AT&T, and when they uh, introduced uh, Linux, I mean Unix, operating system, the at t version at Bell Laboratory back in 1969. And Ken Thompson was another uh, developer that worked with uh, also uh, Brian uh, Kernaghan, who also did the ARC programming language uh, on that one. So um, Ken Thompson also did uh, Go language together. He's one of the co-founder of Go language. Fortran compiler is very uh, useful also for scientific uh, computation. 
um, and then we still use it at uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in NASA. Uh, there's um, uh, Intel Fort compiler, and GCC. All of these compilers, Java, uh, Rust, and um, everything that I have named it here, we use it there. Ada it was our oldest programming language that she developed uh, first uh, in the military for the purpose of doing um, uh, Ada programming. Pascal was um, like a mother of all languages, similar to C. And back in uh, 1988, when I was attending City College of New York uh, in the fall of uh, 1998, I was taking Pascal programming language. I took two courses of that one. I really enjoyed it. It's very easy programming language. But it is the Ada, Pascal, Cobol list are not as much used. Cobol is a um, common object business uh, language, and that one is um, also uh, since 1990, it was very famous, but for business uh, project, uh, it's no longer as much um, hot. And uh, like these other ones that I uh, marked them as um, red or uh, dark red, they're all hot uh, in the market. Everybody's using it all, at all time, especially in programming languages like Python or C, C++, and Java, JavaScript, and um, Go language, and Rust, and all that one. Assembly is good for uh, device driver and machine le uh, learning, uh, uh, machine programming and game programming. You could do a lot of um, fast programming there. Lisp is a, a kind of like object-oriented version of uh, older one that we uh, used at college long time ago, back in uh, 90, 94 or something. I think either I was taking a class for artificial intelligence course uh, kind of things so for my master's degree, that we had to write uh, some kind of uh, a small project with tic-tac-toe and other, other kind of gaming programming and uh, recognizing certain things with Lisp, Snowball, and then C++. I took some C++ courses as well as Lisp um, at Cal State Fullerton. Lisp is uh, also a function of programming as well as it was um, uh, something called Common Lisp, which was uh, for object-oriented version of Lisp. And then Lisp uh, is also recursive uh, functions that you're just uh, calling function within functions, nested functions, and then you're making and those calls. Swift was also great at one point that uh, Apple is still use it. Um, and then uh, they still use uh, those ones for iPhone, iPad, and other programming languages to uh, develop apps on this one. Objective-C was similar. So Objective-C is kind of phased out uh, a little bit because of Go language and then um, and, and C++ and uh, Rust and other ones. Java um, and then Python, they're taking uh, over with a lot of these uh, stuff. So in terms of interpreters, we have Python, IPython, which is interactive Python, Jupyter Labs, Jupyter Notebooks, and then we have IDEs, which are uh, PyCharm, Visual Studio Code again, and then uh, there's a number of IDEs that you could uh, get download for every one of uh, the interactive Python stuff that you can do code, um, sometimes even like Adams and, and the editorial people use it. Sometimes JetBrains are kind of software, they use it, Xcode and for IDs and then JavaScript and um, Cascaded, the style sheet, HTML, all of those ones are not in, uh, kind of interpreter, but it is on the browser side, it is interpreted uh, at the browser side. PHP, Ruby and R language, they're all kind of, um, very, very powerful. Uh, then um, it is uh, just uh, PHP. You can write professional homepage with an HTML file. Uh, you can call it and then Ruby similar and then R. PHP, Ruby uh, are very much for, uh, and Python for uh, web programming as well as general purpose programming. Python does all of them, scientific uh, programming, um, artificial intelligence, data science, and then as well as um, web programming. R languages for um, basically um, statistic kind of um, formula analysis and then a lot of um, the stock market and everything you can do a lot of the R language. Awk is uh, very, very powerful, uh, kind of like shell uh, scripting. Uh, and the, as the name is done, awkward programming. And it was uh, from the three pioneer 
the last one P a K for uh, Brian Kennegan uh, was one of the developer, and then all of these people they developed the off programming to write a simple program in one kind of uh, small line, and then you could do uh, what you could do in other languages and multiple uh, pages. Uh, SH a born shell, corn shell, bash, or uh, another type of shell that are there. Bash is a superset of corn shell, and corn shell is a superset of a born shell. And that's why bash is called born again shell. And then C shell and through C shell, or also C like syntax that um, supported through C shell and superset of C shell. And ZSH is two percent of all of them. So ZSH um, is the as the name stands for the last character in the uh, alphabet Z and SH for shell. It is just um, enhanced for having all the features that uh, both Bash and True C shell had, and then put the combination of all the um, feature of Corn shell, Bash, and True C shell. And they call it uh, ZSH as well as uh, they made some graphic and improvement on the aliases and a lot of other options, features. For, all, for um, a practical extraction reporting language was really hot back in 2000, 2003. You know, everything on the web we were programming. I, in fact, I wrote the entire my web university in um, Perl, um, in uh, Bash, and then uh, shell scripting as well as. CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, and some PHP, some other maybe um, other languages like C or C++. And then I converted all the Perl programming uh, back a few years ago into Python. But uh, Perl is uh, moving, um, you know, getting like a legacy kind of system, but it was powerful for the web and it did everything that uh, Python does. Python, on the other hand, has a lot of more modules and a lot more easier to use and a lot more fancier things to do with it. And so Python is a winner here. And then we're going to discuss a demo section on the uh, Linux uh, Rocky version today now for both compilers and interpreter. So let me just uh, show you what I have here. As you can see, I have already booted uh, a Rocky Linux 9. And then um, the setting is really good, it's powerful. So I'm, I'm not gonna just go through the setting because on other videos, I have shown you what is what kind of processor I have and everything. Here I'm cutting the file etc um, Rocky release and it shows that it is uh, Rocky Linux 9.2. And then my print working directory is slash home slash yi. When I do a, a list, uh, it shows these files that are um, I have, and if I do a long listing with lab out loud cat, which this is a um, utility that I installed afterward, I get different colors uh, with the same kind of information with after the lo long listing. That's uh, like piping. So I have these demo directories and uh, everything. So I'm going to clear the screen here by typing clear and then do a PWD. If I do a list minus L, you see these files there. And then uh, the reason I did that one to show you in color, because blue on blue, it does not get, look good. So I could do this and then sometimes, honestly, it is uh, this information. I'll change it to a different font. I wanna just show you first um, uh, a shell script with this, this background to see if um, um, which laugh out loud cat is there and which, uh, um, um, figlets is there. Uh, so let me see. Uh, show, not show. Show fig uh, fonts. This this is all showing all the fonts that is available here. At the same time, if I just go which uh, figlet, then it's uh, figlet is there as well. So I have a directory here called programs, and then I'm gonna go to shells. Sorry, uh, shells, and then uh, CD to um, loop for learn uh, Unix by example, and uh, CD to demos. So this is uh, where um, the other script was also completed. Then I'm going to uh, do a ls minus l, uh, ls minus l here, and I see all the files here. As you can see, 
all the files that I have for shell scripting, I can run it. But one of the uh, files that I want to run first is called welcome. Welcome.sh is a shell script, cap minus n, welcome.sh. And you can see this file is a little bit long. It's um, 23 lines, but then uh, Shebang user Ben DNB is telling uh, the environment uh, binary to load the interpreter bash. So once it loads the bash, interpreter then runs these commands and uses a for statement between one to 10, it's supposed to say welcome. Uh, and then uh, this is my um, YouTube channel. And then the YouTube channel is defined here. So it's gonna print this information, but it's gonna print it based on the uh, color, where if, um, the color is gonna be either a zero with a white color, or it's gonna be a laugh out cut, loud cut, uh, where if the module divisible by two is not equal zero, the else part. So uh, let's uh, clear the screen, run the welcome here. And as you can see, this program, it uh, just produces this output. Let me just make this screen a little bit wider. Okay, so you can see here from line one through 10, it basically uh, wrote that uh, same, um, welcome to my YouTube channel, my web university, 10 times with different color. So as you clear the screen, if you run it every time you run it, uh, the welcome is going to produce a different output. The screen is going to be different. So I could um, have a different background on this one, and it, it's still uh, going to run the script, depending on what uh, you want. And then if you just change the background here, preferences, I go to colors here, change the background, let's say I want it white, and then select, and then the text on this one, I want it dark. So I want it uh, dark like this. And then I just choose this one. And now this font is there. And then you can see the color is uh, different. So if I just do this, notice that uh, the background is not as dark. So I'm gonna do another a preference here and go to colors and then choose this one, much darker color. And then here I could put, um, all zeros, six zeros, and then that would make it um, all dark. So this is dark. And then uh, now uh, I do the same thing for screen PWD. It's much darker uh, on the text uh, there. And then um, clear the screen here, welcome, the search, and then I run this one. It does run the fonts uh, the, the way I want it, and it is uh, there. So if I just want to resize this window a little bit smaller, I can also close this window and open a new window. If I just say uh, activity and I say, go ahead, open a new terminal, minimize this one, open a new terminal by just clicking on terminal here. Uh, why is it not opening a new one? This is still downloading, so I'm going to click here. And um, I could just resize this one here. And so you have these handles. You basically move the handle to resize it here. And then that's good enough for uh, this. I believe I could just make it a little bit wider and a little bit bigger. Like that's good enough. So uh, at this time when I'm on this directory, I'm going to go to we run the shells, uh, the welcome, and then uh, let's run another program called um, on this one to see what other things I have. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go to awk. Um, awk is um, uh, for the interpreters. Since I'm on the interpreters, uh, let's do awk and see what we have here. Uh, as you can see, the, the cat minus n data file it has this a, a file that only has numbers one through seven. So if I just uh, don't put that minus n, it just shows the file that is one through seven inside there. But if I want to see the line number, it is there. So the same thing I could do uh, uh, awk, and then I could say uh, print, 
and then I say a data file. This is similar to the cat command, as you can see here, and that is um, displayed. So the other thing that you could do with awk is that if I want to say, for example, hello world, I could say something like echo and then say hello uh, world. And then um, I could do this one that would just produce a, a hello world on the bash, the uh, born again shell that I have. But if I want to print that one to an awk, then I could say awk and then say print and then that would uh, print it uh, all over there. So the example of uh, this one, if I look at the cat hello.txt, it has uh, hello Wahid. If I want to do that one, and then I could say awk it, and then say print, whether I say dollar sign zero or just uh, do uh, print itself, it will just do uh, whatever was that input file hello.txt. Similarly, this uh, contents of hello.txt, hello.awk has the awk programming language, but it is loading the bash interpreter with env, and it is gonna just say, once we load the bash, then run the command awk with print and then hello.txt. So I could just say, run that one as hello.awk, and it will just do the same thing, hello Wahid. So whatever is the contents of this hello.txt will be printed. So if I just say uh, cat hello.txt, and if I just say echo um, hello, uh, and then instead of hello Wahid, hello, I could say hello Hawk, and to a greater sign, uh, hello and dot text. Now, if I run the same program that I ran previously, now it reads it dynamically and it says hello up because uh, the contents of hello dot text changed. And then uh, the program that we wrote here, it is uh, just saying uh, use the bash and whatever is the content of this file displayed with using awk print statement. That's what that uh, does. So clearing this screen here, another example is uh, for demo. So if I just want to say um, off print, uh, print, and then I could say uh, for demo dot off. It's like a doing cat um, off cat for a demo dot off. That does the same thing. But if I want to run the for demo dot off because the content of it again loads the bash interpreter here with env binary then it's going to do an off statement for for statement and it's going to look for the lucky numbers and then it is going to generate a random number int uh, function this is a function call and then um, uh, convert it eventually into integer uh, time 64 then it's going to just uh, run that one and it's going to generate the lucky numbers for you here, okay? So let's do the other uh, example of uh, this one, which is a while statement, that while demo.org, and then we say while demo.org, it is gonna just print out those numbers there. So whatever is on the data file, that uh, data file, that will, file will be read. So if I say sequence of 10 numbers into a data file, now if I just look at the data file, it is 10 numbers. So that for statement that I run here, the while statement, now it's gonna print this. So if I just do sequence of 100 numbers, as you change that um, data file, the while statement dynamically generate the numbers. You can see that it works on the on the numbers. Okay, so that's for all programming language. And now let's come back to shells. On the shells, we have a number of shells that you can do. C shell. Uh, sorry, let me just go to um, shells and then um, loop directory learn Unix by examples and then demos, and then here, 
started a seashell and cat for each the seashell. And notice the syntax of seashell is different. A for each it has in the statement and then similar to the other one. So if I run that uh, for each uh, statement, let me do um, start the seashell. So for each the seashell, you can see the output is uh, there. Similarly, uh, for the for the seashell, uh, the f statement f dot seashell, and then uh, here more on f dot seashell. Notice that it is using the true seashell syntax, so it is loading the true seashell. So in case if you say which true seashell, that is the seashell um, interpreter, uh, true seashell interpreter. So if I just look at my PowerShell. It is bash, but when I run the program, it's gonna do the shell. So I could also do uh, through C shell minus X and then run that code. But notice that with minus X, you run it in debug mode with the C uh, or C through C shell syntax. And each line, as it runs, it shows you the line number, then it uh, shows you the uh, output. So this is the line number that was uh, running. The output is echo soccer, and then it looks the like F statement. And I love uh, playing soccer. And when the word is soccer, and all those information are displayed here. Okay. And then similarly, uh, if I do a PS here, my C, uh, my shell is current shell is echo dollar sign shell is bash. So I could say uh, through C shell, and now I'm on um, bash uh, through C shell. So echo dollar sign dollar sign and uh, through seashell. So now I have to get uh, the syntax of uh, through seashell, which setting a variable called a set emb name, I could say, uh, let's say, uh, send it to what he. And then now echo dollar sign name, it is uh, set to what he. Similarly, like um, uh, set um, emb x is equal to 10. X is equal to 10. That would just be uh, there. Echo dollar sign X. Not as dollar sign X lowercase is not defined, but dollar sign X uppercase is defined. And then unset uh, ENB uh, dollar sign X, uh, X, I'm um, sorry, uh, unset ENB X. Now echo dollar sign X is not set anymore. So you can do all kinds of things. Environment also give you all the environment and set, give you all the set variables. Similarly, if I'm uh, doing an exit out of this one, I go to uh, PS, uh, now I can go to C shell, and then now I'm on the C shell. Set PNV, X is equal uh, five, and then equal dollar sign X, it is defined. So, and, and set X, uh, equal dollar sign X is not defined anymore. Um, it is uh, still defined, uh, unset EMB. That's why unset is uh, not going to work. That's if you are doing it, a global variable with set. Um, um, uh, sorry, local variable. So uh, set, uh, unset, uh, unset EMB. And now if you do echo dollar sign X is not defined. And uh, that is uh, for the C shell. So uh, if, if you're on the bash, you could say echo um, a low word, it is uh, going to work like that. And if you say uh, echo minus E, and then say, give some taps here um, to uh, display and some new line character, to new line character will just do that for you. And that is um, same thing, hello word. But then if you uh, say, well, I just want to say hello, comma, the word, and then uh, do this one, it's going to just do that. And if you want a, a new line character after it, you just you get this one. But um, uh, the new line character missed uh, the slash in, and uh, that would, wait a minute. Oh, there, this, um, OK. When you do uh, a new line character, you cannot have a no space in between them. That's negating it. So that is a different uh, way to do it. And right here, 
we have to give a space uh, and then it will uh, recognize it. Or you could just say um, something like this. Um, escape it, uh, this one first, and then new line character, and that uh, will uh, not work that way. So the best way to do is just to do this and put a space here, and then that will work the way we want. Okay. So, um, and then you could do the uh, same thing with uh, seashell, and you say echo minus E, and then hello word, and then here new line character, and then that would work for us. Minus E was not recognized. Um, and you don't need to do minus E on this seashell, and it automatically works for the expression. So if you want a two new line character, you just put this two new line character. And then for um, through seashell similar. And now I'm gonna go to ZSH. Let's see, uh, yeah, we have ZSH. So clear screen, which ZSH. And then and now my PS echo dollar sign, dollar sign is pointing to the process ID of a ZSH, which is 8650. So if I do something like uh, echo hello word, and then and that will do the same thing there. And then uh, now on the ZSH, I could say export uh, PS1 as a poll. Let's say I want to just only uh, show a dollar sign there. So it's a shorter um, prompt here. So I'm going to uh, say which uh, ZSH and PS echo dollar sign, dollar sign is pointing to that. So I'm going to say for item and uh, do, uh, dollar sign or uh, sequence of 10. If I just do that one, then say do uh, echo and then num is equal and then I could just say dollar sign item and then close it and then done. It will just print those uh, numbers there. Similarly, if I just uh, go up arrow here, change this one to a sequence of uh, 20, it will just do and, uh, those numbers. But uh, imagine if I want to do uh, go on the sequence between different numbers. So sequence of minus um, five to uh, uh, 30, and then step of five, uh, sorry, minus five. There's no comma. And you should not put comma here. And that would uh, do the numbers echo minus five and num is five. So here, this one, uh, the number, uh, this is step is five, and then the end is 30 here. That's why we end up with a different uh, set. So if you want to start with five, uh, increment by four, and then uh, go to 30, that's what the, that one is, does. So here, if I want to change, from uh, zero, uh, from zero to um, increment by five and up to 30, that would also work. Uh, so notice that 30 is inclusive. So now if I just uh, did this one and I say, okay, that is good, I'm uh, on bash. What if I do the same thing with Python? So Python, interpret the Python 3 dash dash version. It tells me I'm having 3.916. So I could say Python three, and then I could say for item and range of um, five comma 30 increment by five, and then say print item. And that would uh, print five to uh, 25. 30 is not included because it's inclusive um, on the sequence, but not inclusive on the range, the range if you want to include the 30, you have to go up to 35 here, and then that would um, get that, that 30 included, but not 35. So, and the last number and minus one uh, is that the length of uh, that range that will go with the range function here. And then um, uh, quite a, out of this one. So uh, Python is supported. You can quit this way or clear the screen, say Python uh, 3 or Python, and then say exit. That would also do this. 
And inside Python, you can do a lot of stuff here. And then you have also interactive Python. And so um, watch a lot of my videos uh, that I have done already for Python, Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, IPython, all of those ones. But I'm gonna do a quick uh, demo on this one because on Rocky version, we are going to uh, show you how to use that interpreter in this case uh, for Python. So let's do um, IPython. IPython and practice Python. IPython is a uh, clear screen. IPython. If it is not installed, I have to install it. Which IPython? It doesn't look like. Let's see which uh, Jupyter uh, dash lab. It doesn't look like it's installed. So I'm gonna say uh, pep list, and then then uh, pep was not installed. So I'm gonna say, go ahead and install it. And then uh, say, yes, go ahead and install that one. Put a screen, which, um, which uh, pep. Notice that it was not uh, installing it because uh, it does not have a uh, pseudo privilege. And so um, I'm gonna say um, DNF and uh, sudo. Uh, DNF install uh, pip. And then I'm going to provide the password here. Must have typed in the password inaccurately. Trying it again. Okay, so it is uh, installing a Python 3 pip. And then uh, that completed it, which pip. Uh, you can see pep uh, list uh, also gonna show me that it is there. Now I could say uh, pep uh, dash dash version and Python uh, dash dash version, not the Python 3.9 and then pep is also um, pep 21.2.3 for four Python 3.9. This is Python 3.9 and then here's Python 3.9.16. The pep version is, um, 21. So we did install it now. We could say pep uh, install, and then we're going to install, um, let's say, IPython. So this will install IPython, and then clear screen, which IPython, clear screen, which IPython, and then IPython is now available. So I could say I Python and then interactive Python. If I say Elias is all the Elias are gonna show, like uh, clear the screen and will work, uh, LS would work, and then anything that is on the uh, sorry, Elias will work there, uh, as you can see. And uh, so at the same time, LS magic will give you list of uh, magic for cells as well as for line numbers, line magic. And a lot of these options, I have already covered it in details, whether you want to use uh, Python version 2, Python 3, or Ruby, or any other one, they're there. So uh, here, I could also uh, run uh, a similar uh, Python statement. So if I say clear screen, I say for um, IDAM and range of uh, 10 numbers, and then print uh, IDAM, it will just do the same thing that you do that one. Yeah. Import the OS module, OS.system, uh, clear the screen. So you could you could get all of these uh, there. Now I have imported the OS module, I could say uh, PWD or um, do like uh, other function like get uh, environment and then put um, uh, PWD in uppercase and then that will do it or slash uh, home or slash um, path. So all of these ones will be um, available for me. I could even execute some command of the operating system saying os.system and then run here, run here uh, something like os.system and then you name and dash a, it will do that one. Um, so all of that options are available. Available. 
I'm going to exit out of the Python and then see if uh, Jupyter Lab is there. So I'm going to say which uh, Jupyter Lab, it's not there. So I'm going to say sudo uh, pip install Jup Jupyter Lab. And pep install in Jupyter Lab. Let me just say Jupyter Lab. It might be one word. It's one word, no dash lab. But when you type in the, and start up to start it, it's going to start uh, Jupyter Lab on a uh, uh, browser. And it is Jupyter Dash Lab. So now clearing the screen, it is installed, which in Jupyter Lab, it is available. Then I could say type in Jupyter Jupyter Dash Lab, and it's going to open the browser on port 8888 on the local host, which is um, local host 8888 lab, and this is Jupyter Lab here. And at this time, I have the entire uh, kernel of Python 3, as well as console, as well as um, terminals, and then Python files, uh, markdown, all of these options are there. So if I click on the kernel here, I can do everything that I can do on the Unix our Linux machine in this case, uh, like we were looking at uh, earlier. So um, clearing the screen and then uh, now I'm going to open another tab here and click on Python Interactive. Here I could just do the same thing. So if I just say import for OS and then say um, OS.system uh, system and then I could run the command say uh, date command um, and then execute that one by running this one, it will give me the date command. Similarly, like os.system and then run the calendar command, for example, I could get the calendar command. And then similarly, if I want to just uh, go to this one and create a list and just uh, create a list of, um, say, my list, my, actually, let's call it commands. And then we just uh, create uh, a couple of commands. One is the host name. Another one is uh, uh, who am I? So to just show that one. And then a third one is the calendar command like we did. So if I want to run these three commands, I could say for CMD and um, commands, and then say os.system. Since I uh, did not load it here, say import os.system, sometimes uh, you could do uh, on some import os. And sometimes you could do it from previous cell that I already loaded. Sometimes you could, uh, if you didn't load it previously, make sure you load it. os.system, and then I say run the CMD command. And then just uh, that, and then uh, now run it. And right here is the output. So it did the local host command and then uh, who am I uh, uh, and then the calendar. And that's how that is. So on this one, I'm going to exit out of this. I could also get aliases by just typing alias uh, here. Um, sorry, alias. And then run this one similar to the way the uh, other one was working IPython. And then you can also say LS magic. You could uh, get the list of um, the magic um, methods that, that are available for you. There's line magic, and that are all of these, as well as uh, as well as uh, cell magic. And cell magic, uh, you expand it. It's all of this. Okay, and you can see Python two, Python three, Python. Uh, uh, PyPy, SVG, HTML file, Ruby, Bash, all of them are available for you to do that one. So here on this um, browser, you can close it here or you can go under file and then just say close, uh, log out or something. So let's just uh, see what is the option here. Under the file, you can go down all the way to the bottom 
and there's um, option for uh, shutting down as well as uh, log out. So in this case, I want to shut it down. Uh, it is just um, as soon as you do it, it is um, failing to let me click on it. Yeah, save your work. No, I don't want to save it, discard it. So I'm going to shut it down. I don't want to um, open anything. Somehow it is um, getting this other screen. I'm going to just go back here, say file. Let's see if I can click on that one. Shutting down. And shut down. So now it is getting uh, uh, to close that command completed. So I'm going to say that's good. Thank you. And that is um, good enough for Sorry. That's clean up. Okay, now well, I clean up this one. So now I'm gonna go back here. Uh, let's see what other things we have on the program files. So programs here, and then we already covered off programming and we covered a lot of um, the shells here. Uh, and then we also, Cover Python and then IPython and Interactive Python. So and that covers uh, a number of other ones. So Perl is another uh, pra practical extraction reporting language. This one, let's see there, I have a for each statement, which Perl, if Perl is there and the Perl interpreter, then you could just uh, tap um, for each.pl and notice that it uses environment to load the Perl, which is this one, it is available. So it's gonna say print hello Perl and then it uh, goes to the um, array at root. It's gonna define that one, then it's on the for each statement and it's gonna print those uh, lines. So if we say for each.pl, it's gonna just go the output and then for each.pl is this is the code. And notice that for each.pl uh, that has the executable permissions as a set, that's why you have it this. So if you say ls for, uh, ls for each.pl, then you can see that it's an, uh, a green color. That means it's executable set that I could just execute it by running the pro script like this. And then the output will be shown on the below that. that so that's for Perl uh, there. And then let's do the cleaning the screen, clearing the screen. And let's here, we um, cover Python, Perl, Ruby. Ruby is also something we could uh, discuss. So um, Ruby and has a very nice syntax, easy syntax. Uh, you can see a simple hello world uh, program. You use just a this function, and it doesn't require uh, arguments like uh, Python 2 version. You don't need to put the uh, parentheses, and then you just say hello world on it, and it does that one. And then and the compiled version is um, hello underscore Ruby dot uh, Ruby file star. You can see that this one is executable. So if I say hello underscore Ruby dot Ruby, and this one permission denied because that permission is not set, but which uh, Ruby, it is uh, not uh, installed. So I'm gonna install Ruby and uh, say, we are not install Ruby. Uh, let me just check on the Ruby here. So subscription management repository or not up to date. Uh, alrighty. So on this one, it looks like uh, it is it wants to do it, but and so do DNF install, and then I'm gonna type in this. But um, when your subscription manager is saying that your repository is not up to date, you have to uh, update it first on uh, doing the uh, DNF upgrade or DNF update, and then do the uh, Ruby also, which Ruby now is installed. Uh, so I could also say the DNF so do uh, DNF update first. This will just uh, make sure that my repository is up to date. And then when I did the uh, Ruby uh, next, 
which would be this, uh, it already took care of it uh, since I did it previously. So which Ruby is there. And now if I say Ruby, hello dot Ruby, this, it will just create the Randa hello Ruby, this. But if I look at this hello underscore Ruby dot Rubies, this is the second script, then you can see uh, hello Ruby at this time. Earlier I said uh, hello uh, Wahi, hello world, and then it's gonna ju just do that one. And now if I wanna get uh, this contents, I could just say Ruby like this, and it will say hello Ruby. So whatever is the syntax of the source code, you compile it with that one. This is for compilation, uh, the Ruby programs. So let's do the other programming languages. Um, we already are on the programming language compilers because we covered all the interpreters. So I'm gonna make sure that uh, the next one that I'm gonna cover is, I'm gonna go in this order, so C++. Um, um, we could uh, cover C++ or C++, doesn't matter. I'm gonna go in the order that um, this list here is there. So awk, and then I'm gonna go to C next. So let's go to uh, C uh, directory. Here I have hello.c, cat minus n hello.c. And then in order to run that program, um, rm uh, hello, and first make sure that I don't have an executable called hello. So I have only a source file called hello.c, hello.c. And then I'm going to just compile a GCC GCC dash, uh, dash version, it tells me that I have the GNU C uh, collection compiler. And then by just giving a dash O um, and then say hello, and then hello.c as source code. Now I just created hello as executable file. And, and then you can see when you do a file hello, it says executable link format 64 bit. And then to run it, hello, you just type in and it says, hello world, welcome to my web university.com. And then cat hello.c has that uh, syntax on the printf statement, loading the standard IO.h uh, there in the main function, which returns the int uh, successfully zero. So when I say hello, it runs this one, the echo dollar sign zero, meaning that it's uh, gonna just return uh, successful dollar sign um, question mark, meaning successful. So the next program that we could do is uh, like, for example, let's say, uh, hello YouTube channel. Let's see what is inside here. Um, cat minus n hello underscore YouTube channel dot C. And then basically this also does a printf statement. But uh, it does, uh, 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 so the name of the channel, I changed this one to a smaller word. I'm gonna do a vem hello underscore YouTube channel dot C. And then I'm going to uh, take uh, the word free. All of this one out. Um, it is always free because subscription is always free, but this, this name is too long, so I just, want to shorten it uh, so it's easier for people to follow me. And then uh, right here, I'm going to just say um, GCC minus O, hello underscore what T C YouTube channel, and then hello underscore YTC dot C. This is uh, now generated hello underscore YTC, and it is going to say the same word thing that uh, was there. We modified it. So that's for C. Let's do C++ also. Um, let's do a C++. And then on the C++, we have a lot of programs also, but I'm gonna just do a couple of them. Let's do um, hello again, cat hello um, dot C++. You can see it is simple. You just compile it GCC. And this one is a G++ dash dash version. The compiler is um, GNU um, C++ compiler. So in order to do this one, dash dash version will uh, give you an or dash uh, uppercase V would give you the same thing. 
um, dash dash v lowercase v. So the one that we want to do um, with uh, g plus plus here, uh, you could say g plus plus hello, and then uh, minus o. If you don't say uh, minus o, and you just got, uh, type in c plus plus, it creates an e dot out file. And e dot out file is executable that will just give you the output of it. So let's do another program while demo. Clear the screen cat minus n while demo dot c plus plus. And this program is going to do a while statement and uh, finds out whether if it's even or odd. Notice on this one, uh, when we include it, we include IO stream and then we have to do uh, uh, a standard um, the scope resolution in front of C out as well as in front of N line. And then the rest of them is just like C uh, syntax, while statement, F statement, and main and everything else. So here, if I just say G plus plus minus O, and then a while uh, demo, whatever uh, name you want to give it, you could do that while underscore demo dot C plus uh, plus. While I believe there's no underscore yet. So the name is while and demo. So you can say while demo uh, is going to just say the output of those numbers. The next video, the next uh, course that I'm going to cover is uh, the next uh, programming language is Go language. So Go, clear the screen and then CD to Go. Uh, clear the screen here. Let's see what we have here. We have a simple program, hello.go. And then um, here, if I install Go language, um, uh, which um, Go line, uh, it's not there, which um, Go doc and it's not there. None of them are there. So I'm going to do um, a DNF install uh, Go line. And then it says that you need to be super user uh, or search user. And then I'm going to do sudo uh, DNF, uh, that one. I'm gonna type in and because I'm part of the sudoers. Um, I don't need to become root here, I could do this. And then notice that Golang and uh, GoDoc and all of those ones gets installed, uh, including the Go compiler. And again, Go language was uh, introduced in 2007 by Google. Uh, and Ken Thompson is one of the developers, Rob and Robert is the other two. And they all um, came out with this uh, nice programming language that is a much faster in terms of um, compilation. It is a compiled language. It has object-oriented style. You can uh, get a static uh, data type and then a variable declaration, or also um, a static, uh, strongly uh, static uh, defined, and that uh, once you define the variable, you have to tell the data type. Um, it's not like uh, Python and that uh, allow you to just uh, change uh, from one data type to uh, other one. Of course, all programming languages um, support for a casting to data type or um, from one list to uh, tuples or uh, data dictionary to other ones, but you have to do some work to do that. So which Go language is here now, which uh, Go and Doc, uh, Go, actually Go, uh, Doc, and then FMT uh, is uh, just showing you that. So if you're looking for go dot uh, uh, print line, you can then get that kind of uh, documentation uh, print line. Then you get that one, or uh, let's say, for example, format and then um, S scan. So uppercase S and then scan. You can get a function uh, based on that one with go and then go uh, itself dash dash help it tells you all the format uh, whether you want to uh, uh, compile it or run it or um, debug it or anything that you could do is uh, within this call language uh, get the version information and so on it's there so uh, go language is 19.19.10 uh, 1.19 uh, so at this time it is a union dash a and you can see that it is a x64 bit version here, AMD Linux 64. And then what I'm going to do is um, 
uh, compile this program, say go run hello.go, and that would run the hello.go. And notice that it has a package and then the main, then import the format, uh, so formatting the text, and then end, uh, this function main, and see you write end here, you just write font, and then uh, format the print line. This is object oriented, format is the module, and then print line is the method, and you're printing it. So that's for Go language, and then we test that one. Let's see what other things we have here that I need to cover, Nazim. Uh, or Java, Java is the next one. Let's go to Java, see what we have on Java. And then uh, in Java programming language, it has these uh, files called the uh, Java, files start the Java, these are all Java source code. Unfortunately, Linux uh, marked them as C++ or C, which is not uh, correct because they're Java program. And then the reason they do that one is because the syntax is much like C and C++. So um, it is uh, defined there, but file store the class, it is um, a class file there. But these class files are not accurate. So if I say uh, which Java, uh, first of all, the Java virtual machine is not there, which Java um, compiler is not there. So I'm gonna say uh, DNF um, search for open JDK. Uh, so I'm going to see if uh, OpenGDK is provided. And then I believe there's one for default one, grep minus i default. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say uh, sudo install uh, DNF, DNF install um, OpenGDK. And that, that uh, open uh, OpenGDK. Uh, let me just see if the name of that one um, was I any mean, open dash GDK or something. Um, Java 11, and Java 11. Okay, Java open JDK. Right here is uh, open JDK dash. Okay, sudo install um, open and JDK. Okay, that one is not uh, sudo DNF install. DNF install, it is not coming with that one, Java 11. Java, uh, let me see, the name was 11 or something. Here, um, Java. Java latest open GDK. So this is the package that we, uh, we want to install. So I could do exactly that name or uh, just say, the way I would do this one, say, um, let's become root first, sudo su dash. That way I don't have to type in sudo in front of every command. So I could say uh, DNF search open JDK open uh, open and gdk and then grep minus i um, default uh, if uh, the default is there or latest grep minus i latest now notice that latest open gdk is right here but there's a number of open uh, latest gdk uh, source and then um, the one that I want is uh, do it, the Java latest, that's open GDK, x86, 64-bit. Uh, um, let's go up to the point, um, we have Java dash latest dash open GDK. So we say DNF install, uh, ins uh, DNF install uh, Java dash latest dash open and JDK. And then the rest of the packages that are named, whether uh, uh, whatever informations are there, and that would uh, require a, a lot of other dependencies because of this main one that uh, those dependency will be installed with it together. And I'm gonna say, yeah, go ahead and install them. Now notice that when it installed it, uh, it's gonna come up with uh, a lot of these um, uh, related packages uh, and binaries for it.
So the OpenJDK version that is uh, getting installed here uh, is going to um, fulfill the needs for it. Right now it is, um, this one is a little bit uh, slow. It's 38% or 39% done. Um, let's see how many package. That's 10 out of 10. So that this one is done. We're all done with all of them. And currently it is at 59%. So we just uh, give it a few seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and it should be done. Okay, so right now it's 81% done. Another 10, 15 seconds, maybe. I assume that it, uh, it's taking a little bit more time than I thought. Almost there. Okay, now it's done. And then this one is going to complete everything else. Once that one is done, now I say which Java, now it is there, which Java C is there, which, they, let's see, which Java C is not there, which Enjoy is not there. So some other stuff did not come with it. So I'm going to say uh, DNF provides Java C. And then and this one is going to tell me the name of the package that I can uh, install, is, which is this one. So that is the name of the package. I could also uh, dynamically get that program here by doing this and say grep minus i java dash 11. That would uh, give me this. And then now remember that awk programming language, I could just uh, get up to all of this and then get the first field. I could say um, awk and then uh, print dollar sign. And instead of cut and pasting, uh, you can just uh, do it like this. Now, this is the name of the package that I need to install. Then I'm going to say, while I read a var, do and uh, say echo installing the uh, package dollar sign var now. So if there's more of them, it will do those ones. And then I'm going to say uh, DNF install dollar sign var and then um, let it uh, get installed. And that would uh, prompt me for it. Now, since I say DNF provides, um, it already uh, did this one because is this correct? Let me just uh, do this one and I say yes. Operation aborted. Why did it get aborted? Because somehow it was giving the option here uh, with prompt, I'm going to say minus Y for a yes, uh, because I'm going to just uh, prompt it to install it. And I, it did not uh, require um, uh, input from me. That's why. Now it's completed, and let's say which Java C it is there. So the compiler there. there. And then um, also, if I say RPM minus QA, grep minus I, Java, now these packages are there. Open GDK and everything else there. For each of these packages, I could say, for example, while I read a var, and then say do, and if I say RPM minus QL, list it, the dollar sign var, and then say grep minus I, bin, and done. Now, for each of those packages, the bin uh, libraries are there. So some of the packages that are like Java C, it is there, the JAR files are there. All of those ones are uh, related here. I let get a list of them by running this command here. And this is a very handy command. And with the wild read, you're passing uh, the output of this command to this command and the output of that command to this uh, wild read var variable. And then you do whatever you wanna do between just do and done. And in this case, I wanted to see the binaries are from it, and then the key tools are there, or my registries are there, Java, Java, um, JAR file, Java C, and all of that one are there. So um, that is um, a way that you can get all the details here. Since I am on the Java directory, 
uh, I'm going to exit out of the uh, uh, root and on the Java directory. And then the first example was hello dot in Java. And if I just want to do Java hello dot uh, hello, which is has the class, it is still run it. And this is called, uh, that's what's nice about the Java is it's write it once and uh, run it many times. So if you have a class file, all you need to do is uh, have the Java virtual machine, which is uh, this uh, Java uh, available. This is the Java virtual machine. And the compilation, you don't have to recompile it again. It is already there. But if you recompile it, they say uh, Java um, C minus, um, you don't have to say minus and you say, Hello dot. Uh, let me just remove remove um, hello dot class. And uh, uh, now I all I have is uh, file hello dot uh, uh, dot uh, Java, which is the uh, Java binary. Uh, so I mean J Java source code. So I say Java C hello dot uh, Java is going to just create the uh, same uh, file with hello dot uh, class and it says uh, hello dot class is a compiled Java class uh, data file. So now if I want to run it, I just say Java hello and it will run that one. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the next one f dot Java. That's an f statement within the Java. So I'm going to say in Java um, f and it will run it without uh, compilation. Write it once, uh, run it many times. That's what's nice about the Java virtual machine in this case. The next program that I did was while demo cat minus n, while uh, demo dot Java, oh, I'm sorry, color spin uh, cat minus n while demo dot Java. Okay, the while is maybe uppercase W, yeah. The Java program start like that. So I go here, cat minus n, and now, um, or uh, I could say Java, and then while uh, demo, that would uh, still, uh, let's see if while demo is executable is there. No, it's not there, so that means I have to compile it. Uh, in order to compile it, you say Java C for compiler, while well, uh, demo dot Java, and now we have the file uh, while demo dot Java as well as dot class, which is the compile. So I can say Java while uh, demo, and it's going to run and it's going to do that uh, demonstration between hello Java and when it is uh, the number is five, it says I love um, this. As you can see, the content of the file while uh, demo dot Java. It has that uh, if a statement if i is equal five, then it says I love the number five, and that's what uh, the output shows there. So um, so we covered that one, and let's see what else we need to cover. Uh, the next one, uh, Python, JavaScript, NASM. NASM is for um, the I think I already covered Ruby, and then I'm going to cover NASM, and that's the last one that we cover on this session. So um, CD to NASM, which is um, CD to NASM. And then here we have uh, the program uh, .asm uh, for uh, hello.asm, and then cat minus n uh, hello.asm, assembly language. And then you can see the program is uh, all the available here. And also you have the text portion of it, which is called hello, um, hello dot, uh, s, And then uh, that's a uh, text uh, section for it, as well as I'm going to uh, just rm hello dot output here. And I'm gonna just uh, say, look at the hello dot compile here. And then notice that uh, it uses NASM to uh, do it. And if I say which NASM at this time is not there, so I say DNF install NASM. Um, it is uh, saying that you need to be root privilege against sudo 
DNF installed another. Um, which, okay, DNF um, provides NASM. Okay, so it does not um, find it. Let me just say, it might be part of another package that I have to do it uh, here. Uh, let me just, uh, maybe it's part of the EPAL. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, go here and then um, go to uh, shells um, and then uh, shells and then I'm gonna go to a loop uh, so loop from directory demos this um cat ethel dot text file I prepared. Uh, for this purpose, so I'm going to do uh, this sudo dnf install and this uh, package um, this to see if we can do it and then dnf dash upgrade also I might uh, have to do that one copy and then paste this one and this now uh, updated my repository is already installed and it says that epal is already there. Uh, so I could say sudo and DNF update, uh, sudo DNF upgrade, see if uh, I need to upgrade anything, everything is up to date. And then DNF search NASM. Okay, so NASM is Rust dash NASM. And then other ones, I'm going to try run NASM during your cargo. I'm going to try to do that first one, say, DNF um, sudo DNF install rust dash nasm dash rs plus default. Um, okay, so it is um, not getting installed a lot of them because of uh, the Otherwise, um, DNF provides NASM. I'm going to do a star slash star. Okay, so EPAL NASM is this one. What is the package name? Is uh, might be this. No, that's documentation. Um, I'm checking on the binary that is available for it. And I did it on another platform. It was a different uh, package. So let's see what um, run best. And Nazim. Graph minus I then. really hard to uh, see what is the one that I needed because it gave a number of other ones and uh, none of them is showing clearly the one that I need. Uh, Okay, for the NASM, I had to uh, search on Google to see what uh, package uh, or RPM have available for NASM. And I find out under Rocky Linux packages, uh, this is the package name. And in order to install it, you just basically run these commands. And one of the command is uh, right here uh, that um, with all these documentation packages that are there, this uh, DNF dash dash enable, Repo is equal power tools install NASM. And then um, at the same time, uh, I uh, recorded here that information. So next time I, I have the detail here. As you can see here, I already um, run the command here. 
so sudo dnf and dash dash enable install nasm and then um, this will just install nasm and then uh, make it available for me you can also get the rpms uh, all of them and the dependencies and install it but unfortunately that is uh, more time consuming and this is much faster way to just enable the repository and install NASM here. As you can see uh, here, I already uh, installed NASM here, file user bin NASM, and it tells you that it's um, ELF executable for uh, uh, assembly code there. And then the other thing I did was NASM info, uh, info file. I created this file uh, called NASM-info, which is uh, telling you how to do installation of it as well. And then since NASM is installed now, I could uh, look at the files here and uh, this, uh, um, hello.compile, it has the list of instruction to say that in order to uh, compile uh, assembly code, I need to create, uh, run the NASM binary with dash F ELF for executable link format, the name of the source co code, which is hello.assembly, and that uh, just generated hello.out. Um, so the file hello.o is uh, the uh, executable relocatable object file in this case, and then I'm going to now use the which AS, which is the assembly in which AD uh, which LD does uh, the loader. So I'm going to say, uh, in order to do that one, I'm going to cut um, hello dot compile one more time. We already did this in NASM part and that is uh, created the object file, uh, hello.o, which is this one. And then I'm going to now do the AS for assembly minus O, hello.out the object file and hello.source. Uh, that's uh, already done here. Then now I'm gonna do um, a linker. And so I'm gonna do, uh, do the linker. So ld-s-o, hello is the binary file that I wanna create and then from hello.object file. Now um, hello file is there, file hello. And then if I just run hello, I just say hello world. I remember how hard it was, how much work you have to do just to do a simple hello world program. But uh, the um, power of assembly language is that you can do a lot more than just uh, writing a hello world. And it's very uh, efficient because it's one level closer to the hardware in terms of uh, machine language. It's a uh, mnemonic and uh, pseudo uh, kind of uh, sources uh, rather than C and C++ or Python that is uh, a little bit higher level language and that uh, they um, are uh, the next level on top of the assembly. Uh, so uh, it is the hardware, the assembler, and then um, high level languages, and then on, on uh, other application and utilities on top of that. So we did cover everything that we wanted to cover. I hope you liked it, and I hope you are going to use these um, uh, videos, and you're going to watch them, and then enjoy them, and learn them, and um, join our channel. Take care. God bless you all. I'm going to end this video at this time. And oh, before I do that one, let me just uh, one last um, uh, note that I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go back to this command line, and then I'm going to just say, uh, run the um, CD2 programs, and then I'm going to do shells, uh, loop, learn uh, Linux, uh, loop, and learn Linux, learn Unix by example, and then demos. And then I'm going to run the piece uh, dot search script. And that um, just tells you the banner information. Notice the color is a little bit too light on light. So I'm going to uh, just uh, change this color on the preferences here to a darker background. So I go under colors. Notice how easy it is to just uh, do a different background here. 
So if I want it uh, like that, um, or I could just uh, make it all dark, I could do it, or just make it uh, like that much color and dark is good. And then this one on the text, I'm gonna make it all white. Uh, so that is good uh, with that uh, type of white color. And, and now notice that uh, my text already changed. So if I run piece, you will see that uh, the fonts and everything is uh, different. Peace to you all. But um, this one is basically telling you the uh, register. So let me just uh, change the font uh, one more time. Uh, I think you will like it when it is a little bit darker greenish kind of color maybe. And we could do that one and say select. And then now this is the darker green. And then we could do it also with blue color. But notice that every time you run the welcome, it tells you that my web university uh, channel that you're going to join in. And then the piece is going to print on different colors. Yeah. Let's do one more time uh, with a different colors uh, like uh, I want to see how uh, it works on the black color. So I'm going to change all of this one to pound zero, 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 zero. That would uh, make it completely dark. And then the um, font front, I'm going to make it all an F. You could do three F as a, a similar like six F. So that is um, the color. And now notice here the commands are running. So if I run at the piece of the search, it uh, runs uh, that color and it's a little bit better format. Similarly, if I do uh, the welcome that we did earlier, it prints it on that one. So again, last but not least, piece of the search. And then um, please make sure that you uh, join our channel, which is uh, youtube.com at my web university. That's the file handle. And then welcome to um, peace to you all. Take care. God bless you. Bye.